Hey guys, Shane here, Figure Deck 3D Printing. Today we're taking a look at Make Shapers MKS Green PLA. Alright guys, welcome back. So again, this is Make Shapers MKS Green PLA. Make Shaper was awesome enough to send me three different types of filament. Their TPU, which I'm currently still printing with their PETG and this PLA. PETG will be another video coming up soon. And this is their green and this is a quite a interesting green I'll say. Um, but we'll have to see once we pull it out of the box. But first let's take a look at the box. Make Shaper has a very nice sturdy box. It's probably the sturdiest one I've ever seen. They've got their logo here on the back with the recycling information. Here on the front it's a simple sticker that wraps around that actually holds the box shut. And here on the side they give a lot of super useful and awesome information. Right at the very top obviously they tell you what the filament is, the color, the size, their UPC barcode, and then it gives you a lot of information here. So it's telling you here optimal print temp 190 to 215C, so obviously you know it's a PLA. The length, I love how they do this here, it is 1063 feet or 324 meters on this spool. So again, if you keep track using Simplify 3D or any other slicer, it tells you how much filament you've used for that print. You can write it on the side of this and know how much filament pretty close to how much is left on your spool. The next three things on here is the hub diameter, spool diameter, and spool thickness. So if you're designing this spool to fit on a certain printer, or if you're looking for a spool that fits inside of your printer, say you have like a rise uh, what's it, the N2 Plus, the real big one, filament goes inside of that. And a lot of other printers, the filament goes inside. If you're curious or worried, I should say, about how big the spool is, they tell you right here and there's no guesswork whatsoever. So that's really nice to know. And finally here, it gives you the lot number. And again, I've always said this a ton over all the different filament reviews I've done, is keep in mind the lot numbers because if you ever have problems with that spool, you can write back to the company, give them the lot number, they could be like, oh hey, we actually had a problem there, let's send you a new spool. I'm actually having the exact same issue with another company, and guess what, they're sending me a new spool. Obviously right here is a really, really good sticker made in USA. So let's open this up and take a look at it. Okay, so here it is, the MKS Green, which is kind of a mix between, it's like a light lime green, I'd say. Um, this is a yellow in my shirt. I know y'all love the new shirt. It's a yellow in my shirt, but this green actually is pretty close to it on like a gr more green scale, obviously. And I do see there's a little tiny desk kit pack in there. It's packed rather well, as it always should be. And again, here on the side, as with their TPU, the lot number is on the spool itself. So if you lose track of your box, if you use them or not, or keep them, I should say, uh, your lot number is right on here. And it gives you information here right on the side, optimal print temp and what the filament is. Our desk can pack. And again, they wrap this super well. I, you can really tell that they take pride in putting these spools together and they take great care. Some manufacturers you can see, they don't really care. It just spins back and forth real quick. They wind the spools as fast as they can in order to get them on the shelf. Make Shaper actually takes care of that and I do love to see that. It's a solid uh, spool, so that's nice and sturdy. Not gonna worry about this coming apart. It's also actually really thick. I'm a little surprised at how thick their spools are in comparison to some of the other ones. So it makes it really, really rigid. And again, I think this is just a terribly cool color. So this is PLA. We can print pretty much anything with PLA. And you know, it's the universal filament. It gives you a great result if you have everything dialed in. So after we figure out my temperature to be exact, which from 90, 190 to 215, I'll probably start around 205, 210 like I normally do. I print higher temps. I should say this. I print PLA at higher temps because I print PLA so much faster than other filaments. You can print it at 190, but you're gonna have to slow your, your speeds down because your extruder probably isn't gonna be able to keep up unless you're using a Titan extruder. Uh, but that's just something just for general knowledge in when printing with PLA, upping your temperatures and printing for speed. You need to up your temps as well in order to get good results. So let's put this on the printers and see what we get. And howdy, hey, okay. So I printed lots of little models with this uh, filament. I didn't do anything big with it. I might do a bigger print later, but a lot of these prints actually took quite a bit of time. And I actually took the time to do some prototyping for a project I have coming up, which is making a 
PC case holder stand type thing out of 2525 aluminum extrusion. Uh, you can substitute that for any size uh, extrusion that you want to, but I decided to take some time to do that, so that took out a lot more time than I was expecting, so I didn't end up doing a large print. But I have lots of small prints with lots of details here, so let's take a look at them. Okay, so we're gonna go in order of the way that I did these prints, simply because I ended up having issues with the Monoprice Select Mini, which surprised me because I haven't had an issue with it yet. So this is the very first print I did on the Monoprice Select Mini, and this is the AA battery holder. It just sits on your desk like so, and the AA battery, you put it in, it slides down, slides down, slides down, and cues up down here at the bottom, so you can just pick it out and work with it. I've printed this in other filaments, and it came out great. And this one, it came out fairly well as well. Uh, I did have some under extrusion lines up top, but down below there was basically no issues whatsoever until I had like two or three lines up here that just slightly under extruded, which surprised me. And uh, there was no real issue with stringing, which I have had in other filaments trying to print this because it takes a lot of retraction to make this thing print. But the bottom layer came out good. Side layers are nice. This overhang here with that is a pretty serious curve as it prints it, and it printed it just fine. This was pretty good. So next I print this little Aztec Chief, and he came out fairly well again. He did feel a little light to me with 20% infill. So again, I noticed up here at the top, he had some under extrusion. I was like, what the heck is going on here? I mean, the bottom layer, you can't get a better bottom layer than that. There was no elephant footing on the first layer, so it was perfectly aligned. Everything else looked really good until I got up to the top, until I felt actually how heavy the print was. And down here again, the bottom of his shield is the issue with every filament I've had so far. There's no amount of cooling has been able to round that off that I could find yet. So again, this was the second print on the Mon Price Select Mini. The third print is this little Moa head. So he's like the Easter Island style guys, if you don't underwear at that. And he had some pretty serious banding and underneath here, which wasn't an issue before on the Mon Select Mini using, uh, what was that, Proto Paradigms Navy Blue PLA, but it was an issue here with this filament having those lines there. And you notice here, there's under extrusion in his shoulder. And if you can hear it, or actually see it, you can see I can actually pull it apart there some. So there was pretty bad layer adhesion there. So I was like, okay, one more print. Let's try something. I changed a few things up to see if it would fix it. And that one turned out even worse. So this model is a bunch of cubes interlocked, and this comes with the Cube 3. Well, it's on there, uh, with, there's a package you can download of all the prints for the Cube 3 3D printer, and this was one of them. And as you can see here, major, major under extrusion going on. And I didn't notice it at first because the bottom few layers were just fine. Then all of a sudden the print just totally went to crap. And actually even the one here in the middle which actually joins these two together totally broke off. And that was a bummer. So I was like, okay, you know what? We're done with the monoprice. There has to be an issue with the, f with the, with the printer, not the filament, I was my hope. So we switched now to the G-Tech. Now the G-Tech, I went ahead and printed out the Aztec Chief again. Now this guy is significantly heavier than the original one I printed on the Monoprice Select Mini. And he came out much, much better. No under extruded layers anywhere. I do have my Z banding, which is just an issue with that printer. And look, his shield actually came out much better than it did on the Monoprice. So that was a nice surprise. You know, and even where his shirt here uh, changes, that also came out just fine. And I'm very happy with this. This was much, much nicer print. Bent bottom layer is really nice, no elephant footing whatsoever. So yeah, this one would turn out much better. Now let's look at some other prints on that printer. So I did print, and you can see how large this is. This is a general doorstop. I needed something for our, so we have a pool down here in our basement, and the door is very high up off the ground where the actual like door frame hits, and I needed something. So this is actually a 200% scale of a regular old doorstop on Thingiverse. And the links for all this stuff is down below as usual. So I did three perimeters, uh, five top, five bottom to give this a nice hard bottom layer. And you can see here, it's kind of hard to tell, but yeah, you can see there uh, the Z banding that I have with the printer, but it, it's a little ribby, but it's okay. This is a purely functional part and I always try to print functional parts if I can. This obviously happened to be one that I really needed and it made my wife super happy to have that. And again, this was a 30% infill because I wanted this to be strong when it gets shoved underneath that door. You can see where it hits right here where that dirty spot is. We already had to use it. It clamps that door open perfectly. It's really nice. So 
this came out fantastic. Again, this was on the GTEC. Another print here is a cookie cutter that I designed for my sister. So there is a uh, bakery that used to be in business near her that used to make these cookies. So she did is she ordered one more time the cookie from them, traced it out for me, and I went ahead and created this with a little bit of help from some of my friends on Facebook to create this cookie cutter. And this turned out absolutely perfect. You know, there was a little bit of the, where the retraction change was, so my traction settings were a little bit off, but I have to say, it just came out absolutely beautifully. This will make some awesome little cookies, and the one that I actually made for her, you can scale this up. The original one, it scales up to be about 12 inches wide, so it is a humongous cookie, and it's called the Lovasaurus. And again here, I love to print my maker coin out. It is a awesome benchmark for a lot of the filaments because I use a consistent model across all filaments that I test, it tells a lot. Now just looking at the top of this, it is immaculate. Came out absolutely great, no issues under extruding anywhere, no gaps anywhere, none whatsoever. All the corners are filled in, these top layers are nice, really great, and there is also no stringing anywhere. Now if we flip to the bottom, here's where we have the standard PLA issues, where here on these first layers, because of the incline, they have an issue there. Printing over top of support, even though I'm using dense layers, again, there's a little bit of an issue there. The bottom layers came out pretty good. I was a little off of my settings, but because I compensate with some of the first layer settings, it doesn't really affect any of the other print. And actually you can see there's a little bit of the dense infill still hanging out there. But overall, I'm very happy with the overall quality of this. Just need to watch out for those extreme angles. And then the last thing for my random prints was a fossil fish. I haven't printed this in quite a long time. Uh, the guy that made this is a pure genius, so the joints are actually in. You can see it's a it's a hole in this point, in this piece is a hole, and this piece is a, a pole, a, I know, a straight piece that goes all the way through. I don't know how to explain the joint. It's a locking joint like that. It prints in place just like this. You pick it up, you give it a bend, and it goes. You can see how far that bends. All prints in one piece. This is 100% scale of the model. So it's this nice itty bitty little fish. And he turned out really well. Uh, my top layer was a little bit under extruded. That's why there's some of these gaps in there. But that is kind of to be expected on these wee tiny prints. You have to really adjust your settings to get them to come out properly. But I am really happy with this one. Okay, finally here you see I have a power supply and there's this bracket on here. And this is actually version 4 and here is version 2 and version 3. Now these hook on to this power supply, standard ATX power supply, and the holes are set up to go on to 2525 lumen extrusion. So this is a project that I'm working on right now that will allow you to mount all the parts using a bunch of 3D printed pieces. You can mount all PC parts to 2525 lumen extrusion. You just need the lumen extrusion and you need some plexiglass to mount for the motherboard. But you could do uh, 3D printing as well, but I wanted to do that to give it a nice sturdy base. Again, I, this was great. This is what 3D printing is so awesome for. It's for prototyping. Fast prototyping. In my opinion, it's great. So I had printed out an original version in another filament that I was testing out a while back, and it just didn't fit properly, and it warped on me. So I printed this all on the FT5 onto build tack, so make sure that it would stay down. I would have any warping whatsoever. You can see these are perfectly straight. You put them up together. There's no gaps anywhere in there. They just came out absolutely fantastic. No issues there at all. So super happy with that. My Just my spacing was off, and I'm horrible at measuring. So especially measuring like, eh, from here to here is roughly this much, and from the top to the bottom is roughly this much. So guesstimating that to me is a little tough, but I was able to get it within four versions. I'm happy with that. But again, this is why 3D printing is amazing, and I think everyone should be doing it simply because that you can take an idea, throw it into, I use SketchUp for this, throw it into SketchUp, print a few revisions of it for pennies for each one of these to print out, and then to have a functional part is just an amazing thing. And this has a 30% infill, three uh, perimeters, four top, four bottom to keep it nice and sturdy and to make sure that it holds on really tight to this power supply. So again, with the results I was getting out of the monoprice like me, I really had my doubts about this filament, but changing out to a different printer absolutely showed it was the actually the printer itself. I tried doing another filament in the Select Mini. I'm having the exact same issue, so I need to do some purging and some cleaning of that nozzle to see what actually is going on there, because clearly there's an issue, and I need to try and fix that. So that actually has been out of commission for over a week now, until I can spend some time to actually work on it and see what the issue is. Other than that, again, this was a great standard PLA. If you're looking for something in this type of green or any type of uh, color, they've got a lot of colors on the website. Again, this turned out it works. Uh, PLA really is hard 
to do wrong these days. And back in the day, with the really cheap ones, came out really bad. Really expensive ones were so much better. This really fits down the middle. So I appreciate uh, Make Shaper for sending me this. It was a great learning experience for me for different styles of prints and to troubleshoot my own printers because having only one printer, if you're having issues, you think automatically, oh, it must be the filament. Not necessarily. It could be the printer itself. And I figured out here alone, it actually was the printer. So that was good to know. And now something I have to also have to work on, which is never any good. So as always, guys, all the links for all of these are going to be down below if you want to print any of these out yourself. Big kudos out to all the designers out there. The only thing I designed was my own little uh, bracket here, which is why I can design. I'm, I'm, I get pretty good at doing this once I figure out the measurements. But when it comes to actually designing like this kind of stuff, no. And my coin, only because I copied Angus's video on how to do that. Uh, obviously, in pointing my own things, but I did a lot of what he did on there just to learn on shape. I'm not very good at designing those kind of parts, just functional things. So thanks again to all you guys. One more time, thank you out to Make Shaper for sending me this PLA. If you guys want to check out this filament, go ahead down below. There will be a link down there where you could buy it. Go ahead and check that out. If you guys like this video and all the other filament reviews that I do, please give us a thumbs up. Thumbs down if you didn't like it. I would love to hear why you didn't. If you want to support the channel, a couple ways to do it. You can subscribe down here. If you want to support me financially, you can do that via Patreon. There'll be a link down here. Go there, donate me a dollar more greatly appreciate it if you want to support me out totally free check out down below there are some affiliate links down there you can update your bookmarks with that or just do some random shopping with those a little slice of what you buy comes to me here at the channel and helps me buy some of the things that i review or what i use to do my reviews or do my videos with so thank you everyone for any type of support you do even if it's just watching you guys are awesome so until next time guys happy printing